I will be staying away from spoilers in this video, so if you haven't read the book or seen the 1989 version of the film, you're still safe here. I will discuss the lore and explain a few minor plot details that happen early on. If you want to know the meaning of the spiral on the tree, then stick around to the end of this video. This video is sponsored by Wondershare Filmora. It's a great option if you're looking to get into editing videos and you're just a beginner. You can just drag your videos right into the timeline and the program comes with music, transitions, filters, and effects. You can also get more assets from the Filmora effects store like the new creepy Halloween pack. I'll be using those effects in this video, so if you're interested, be sure to visit the link in the description. It looks like 2019 is going to be an awesome year for Stephen King fans, with Pet Cemetery and It Chapter 2 on the way. And if you followed my channel in 2017, you'll know It was one of the first Big Things You Missed episodes to get super popular. So today we'll be taking a drive down the road from Derry, Maine to Ludlow, Maine, to take a look at all of the things you missed in the new trailer for Pet Cemetery. Roll it. So many trees. It's beautiful, right? It's definitely not Boston. That's right, it looks like the Creed family moves to Maine from Boston in this movie, as opposed to Chicago, where they're from in the book. Chicago is also where the parents of the wife, Rachel Creed, live. There's further evidence in the family's Massachusetts license plate and Lewis's Cape Cod shirt, which also has the year 2016 printed on it, signaling that the 2019 version will be at, or at least near, present day, just like It Chapter 2, which will be set in 2016. The time period may also hold a clue as to why the family is now from Boston instead of Chicago. In the book, which takes place in the 80s, there's a scene where Rachel needs to quickly get back home while visiting her parents in Chicago. She ends up booking a series of connecting flights, and there's even a scene in the 1989 movie where she runs through the terminal to board a flight that has already closed its doors. In a post-9-11 setting, however, none of that is as realistic, so the family may be located out of Boston so that Maine is just a drive away, rather than a flight away. Boston's Logan International Airport is the closest airport to Maine that Rachel is able to get to in in the book, and she ends up driving from there to her home. So making the family from Boston in this movie just simplifies that journey. Hear that cry in the background? That's the cry of the Wendigo, a mythological cryptid said to be located in the northeastern United States. The Wendigo is one of the better known Native American legends, said to be a human cannibal transformed over time into a giant bipedal deer-like creature that eats human flesh. In Pet Cemetery: the book, the Wendigo cursed the Micmac tribe burial ground in Ludlow, granting it the power to bring those who are buried there back to life as undead cannibals. We don't actually get to see the Wendigo in the 1989 movie, but there may be a clue in the 2019 trailer that it will make an appearance this time. I'll get back to that later on in this video. So the drums played by the Animal Mask children represent the tribal music of the Micmac tribe, and the cry heard in the distance could be the Wendigo. Speaking of the kids in the Animal Masks, what's the deal with them? As far as I can remember, there are no such kids in the book, so who are they? In the book, there are a couple of old stories told by Dr. Creed's neighbor, Judd Crandall. When he first shows them the pet cemetery, he explains that it was created by kids who had lost their pets to trucks on the dangerous road that the town is situated on. My guess is that this is just a flashback scene showing the kids' burial ritual for their pets. The trailer is cut to make it look like Rachel and Ellie actually see the kids' funeral procession, but I don't think that the actual movie will be cut like that. Just speculating here, but I think they're using the clips out of context. We also get to see the family's cat, Church, who doesn't look as creepy as the cat in the 1989 version, but bears a much stronger resemblance to his appearance on the cover of the book. There is a pretty creepy moment from the cat though, and we'll talk about it later in this video. As I mentioned, the road outside the house is extremely menacing. This shot of a truck blazing through seems to be an exact replica of a shot used in the 1989 movie. However, there is one noticeable difference. The license plate of this truck reads C61, the alphanumeric translation of which says CGI. Maybe this is a small hint that this 2019 film will take advantage of computer-generated imagery to do things that the 1989 version wasn't able to, like show a realistic rendering of the Wendigo, or show a more graphic depiction of the scene. Those of you familiar with the story know the one I'm talking about. But for all I know, maybe this is just a set of random letters and numbers. Let me know what you think in the comments. The next thing I'd like to point out is the scene here of Lewis getting out of his bed and discovering that his feet are covered in dirt. In the book, this takes place right after he has this dream, where the ghost of one of his former patients, most likely this guy, brings him to the pet cemetery and warns him to never cross this barrier, known as the Deadwood the divide between the pet cemetery and the cursed burial ground. He wakes up at first, relieved that it was just a dream, until his daughter notices the smell and he discovers his feet are covered in dirt. Lewis's deceased patient, Victor Pascal, makes several appearances to Rachel in the 80s movie adaptation, and that looks to also be the case in 2019. 
Remember when I first talked about the trailer for It and pointed out that Pennywise's eyes were, at the time, missing from the reflection in the water? If you look closely at Pennywise's reflection right here, you'll notice that its eyes don't seem to reflect in the water, which is pretty creepy if you ask me. Yeah, get a load of this. Hopefully they don't end up replacing the eyes for the final movie like they did for It, unless it ends up being even creepier than The Dark Void. One thing that was absent from the 1989 movie adaptation is a character named Norma Crandall, Judd's old arthritic wife, who in the book, without spoiling anything, is a central part in setting the main events in motion. She's replaced by the caretaker character Missy Dandridge in the 80s movie, but this quick shot in the trailer could possibly mean that she'll have an appearance in the upcoming film. Side note, the reason that I keep referring to it as an upcoming movie is because I always get these comments on my movie trailer things you missed episodes that say, this is so stupid, analyzing the trailer, why don't you just watch the movie? Which I do almost always put out a longer things you missed for the movie as soon as it's out, but for whatever reason, there's always that person who ignores that episode and comes to complain about the trailer analysis. So to those people watching this after April 2019, why don't you just watch the episode that I did on the movie? The last thing I'd like to talk about though from the trailer is this image of the tree with the spiral on it. This is another symbol that I don't remember being in the first movie, but it definitely is in the book. Lewis draws this shape in the dirt at one of the graves with his finger without even realizing that he's doing so. Then upon returning to the Micmac burial ground, he realizes the entire thing is shaped like a spiral and wonders if anyone had ever seen this land from above. So the spiral is a symbol of the power that this cursed land has over the town and its inhabitants. Continuing on with the analogy to it, just as Derry seems to have an overlooked history of bad things happening to it that is driven by the malevolence of Pennywise, Ludlow has a similar force presiding over it, driven by the power of the Wendigo. In other words, the spiral is to Pet Cemetery what the red balloon is to it. If you're looking forward to seeing Pet Cemetery, then leave a like on this video. Some of you may recall that the 89 film ended with an original song by the Ramones. I highly doubt there would be another song tie-in today, but if there was, what modern punk band do you think would perform it? I imagine it would probably be Fall Out Boy or something, although there is a certain other band rumored to be returning in 2019. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll be covering a bunch of topics related to the new adaptations of Pet Cemetery and It, so if you love Stephen King novels, then remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week, ring that death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive.